And I call on Rosanna Cunningham. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, overall, Scotland's air quality is good, but we do have a number of localised hotspots in some of our towns and cities where additional action is required. We're working closely with local authorities and other partners to tackle these. We're very clear on our vision for air quality in Scotland. We want Scotland's to be the best in Europe. Air pollution remains a significant public health and social justice issue. Improving air quality is important for the contribution it makes to everyone's quality of life. For some groups in society, the very young and old and those with existing respiratory and cardiovascular conditions, it is even more fundamental. There is no doubt that improving air quality will result in improved health, whilst also delivering more attractive places for living, working and enjoying recreation. And the evidence on health impacts shows that poor air quality reduces average life expectancy in Scotland by three to four months. Whilst this may be lower than elsewhere in the UK, it is still unacceptable. So action is required. The Cleaner Air for Scotland strategy sets out an ambitious work programme to deliver further air quality improvements. Earlier this year, the first National Clean Air Day was successfully staged. During it, we published the first Cleaner Air for Scotland progress report, setting out actions that have already been delivered and the current status of other actions to enhance our air quality. In that strategy, we set out our ambition for low emission zones to be in place by 2020. We have since stepped up that ambition significantly. LEZ set minimum emission standards for vehicle access to a defined area. We want LEZs to help us achieve and go beyond statutory air quality requirements. In particular, we believe that LEZs should focus on nitrogen dioxide and particulate matter, two pollutants of special concern for human health. In last year's programme for government, we committed to put in place the first LEZ by 2018. In this year's programme, we've gone further and committed to establishing LEZs in each of our four biggest cities between 2018 and 2020. And by 2023, this will be extended into other air quality management areas where the national low emission framework uh, demonstrate uh, their value. Delivering multiple LEZs across Scotland is ambitious. It represents the largest ever programme of transport-based air quality mitigation in Scotland. We're also working to further improve air quality by reducing vehicle exhaust emissions. The programme for government sets a bold new ambition on ultra-low emission vehicles, including electric cars and vans, with a target to phase out the need for new petrol and diesel vehicles by 2032. We will expand the electric vehicle charging network, support innovative approaches, and encourage the public sector to lead the way. The ambition is underpinned by our recently published Switched On Scotland Action Plan and builds on the range of incentives we already provide to local authorities, businesses and individuals. Delivery of these ambitions requires clear structures to maximise the benefits of this partnership. We've engaged with Glasgow and Edinburgh councils to establish LEZ delivery groups. We've also contacted Aberdeen and Dundee city councils to discuss how similar groups could be established for their cities. The delivery groups will be supported by an independent senior scientific practitioner who will offer a critical challenge function around the delivery of LEZs. We will also create an LEZ leadership group across the four cities to ensure that knowledge sharing happens in a coordinated and constructive way so that nationally consistent standards are applied and lessons shared. And this will be a ministerially led group and with the Minister for Transport in the Islands, I've written to invite these councils uh, to join uh, the group. The decision on LEZ locations and design will be led by local authorities in partnership with the Scottish Government and regional transport partnerships. I do look forward to announcing shortly where the first LEZ will be. This will build on that council's assessment of the evidence base which has been developed in partnership with SEPA and Transport Scotland. I know that councils are supportive of this evidence, both in assessing needs and supporting their assessment of community and business engagement in demonstrating benefits. That evidence 
will be critical in determining which types of vehicles should be restricted and when. Each area will have its own specific requirements. On 6 September, we launched the LEZ consultation. This is open until the 28th November. The consultation gives us the opportunity to seek views and opinions from business, the general public and other interested parties on issues that will shape our LEZ guiding principles. These will ultimately aid local authorities in the design, establishment and operation of Scottish LEZs in a consistent manner. Initial media reports suggested the immediate banning of cars and buses in 2018. This, of course, is inaccurate and misleading and also missed many of the key points that we need to get across as to benefits and managing change. We are proposing that local authorities identify specific vehicle types that would not be allowed to enter an LEZ. This would mean that such vehicles would be subject to a financial penalty if they illegally entered a zone. We want to avoid such breaches. This is quite different to the approach that is used in other parts of the UK where a road charge uh, can be paid to enter. This road pricing idea is not the approach being suggested in Scotland. Stakeholder engagement during the consultation's development was very clear around the need for robust lead-in periods. Lead-in times would allow commercial fleet operators and private vehicle owners time to prepare and manage the change as part of fleet management. The proposal is that a lead-in period would start once a local authority declared an LEZ design and location, with the lead-in time running for a period after the LEZ is established. European LEZs have set variable timeframes for lead-in times, typically from one to four years. We want to hear the views of a wide range of stakeholders on these very important and practical issues. A phased introduction of inclusion of vehicle types into an LEZ is expected. Local authorities may decide to include private cars, as is their right, at some point if they believe that such emission sources are significant enough to warrant inclusion. The precise arrangements will be in city-specific design plans. I would like to draw particular attention to our bus sector, which has been and will continue to be an integral partner in assisting this government to improve air quality. Buses are a key solution to our air quality challenges, offering commuters an alternative to the private car. They're not villains. Clean, low emission buses are an opportunity. Encouraging behaviour change to move people out of cars and into efficient and low emission buses will help reduce both congestion and emissions at the same time. And these things must go hand in hand. The first LEZ will act as a case study in how the two issues can interact. We will shortly be announcing the winners of the seventh round of the Scottish Green Bus Fund, which will bring forward another 47 low emission buses. Beyond that, the PFG outlined our ambition in terms of extending government support to accelerate the industry's move towards buying the lowest emitting buses. These new buses mean a step change in emissions performance with a better offer for passengers making buses an attractive mode of choice. In the short term, to address the air quality challenge, we are exploring options to support the sector this financial year. This would be targeted at bus retrofitting. We are engaging with the sector to better understand the technological opportunities and challenges that retrofitting will bring. We believe that uh, LEZs should also interact with a host of other transport policies. These include actions to tackle congestion, supporting modal shift, towards more active travel and public transport, delivering climate change mitigation, and support planners in making our town and city spaces more pleasant spaces to live, work, and spend leisure time. LEZs will be designed on the basis of clear evidence, which identifies the air quality issues in a given location and the specific vehicle types that cause air pollution. This will allow the size of the zone and the delivery requirements to be determined and established. We're conscious that designing LEZs must con uh, consider potential knock-on effects. We must be alive to the displacement of air pollution to other areas. We have to ensure that LEZs are delivered in an equitable manner and consider equality issues, particularly for communities who rely on public transport to move around our towns and cities. On funding, investment will be considered within the forthcoming spending review. Costs associated with LEZs, such as enforcement and retrofitting grants, will depend on the type and scale of the LEZs as decided by the local authorities. We need people's views 
uh, across a wide range of Scotland and I do ask members to help highlight the opportunities that well-designed LEZs bring and to encourage their constituents respond uh, to the Building Scotland's Low Emission Zone consultation. The public is a key partner in our work to promote air quality and will be the principal beneficiary. Thank you very much. We're around 20 minutes for questions, starting with Maurice Golden to be followed by David Stewart. Maurice Golden. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to thank the Cabinet Secretary for a prior sight of her statement. The Scottish Conservatives broadly welcomed many of the proposals included in the programme for government in relation to reducing air pollution. Many, whilst many of the SNP government's proposals present a positive and constructive step forward, we believe that the plans fall short of expectation and would argue that there is need for them to go further. The Scottish Conservatives take an ambitious and bold approach to reducing air pollution, such as expanding the network of air quality monitors, in particular introducing them to primary schools. Last year, I met with the Transport Minister regarding the establishment of urban consolidation hubs. These are an, are an essential component for low emission zones by removing the requirement for freight to enter city centres in a commercially feasible way. Glasgow Airport would be an ideal location for one of these and I urge the SNP government to consider this. What support is being provided to local authorities and businesses in order to create urban consolidation hubs? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the issue of urban consolidation hubs has been raised, I think, by uh, uh, the member previously and as he's already indicated, he's having constructive meetings, I hope, with the Transport Minister around this. Um, some of these will be issues for local authorities themselves to consider. Um, uh, the, 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 what we are trying to do here is to empower local authorities to move ahead with what they consider to be the most appropriate thing uh, for their area and we are providing support. I've indicated that that will become available through uh, the budget process this year and next year uh, and that is bound to include, I would imagine, consideration of transport hubs where that's considered appropriate. Um, but uh, at the moment, we're not as a government specifying where that might be. We would be expecting there to be a, 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 a communication that will allow us to develop a, um, a network of those if they're considered to be required and where they might be useful. But that, I'm you know, sure, will be a continuing conversation uh, that the member and others may wish to have with the Transport Minister. David Stewart, to be followed by Graham Day. David uh, thank you, President Officer, and I also thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement. The key issue across the Chamber is how do we improve air quality? Scotland has failed to meet European air quality directives in Glasgow, and across our cities and towns, there are hotspots of air pollution which adversely affect uh, the health of our children, the elderly, and the ill. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that the initial 2018 low emission zone target is on track? And can the Cabinet Secretary also reassure Parliament that the 2020 target just announced will be met as well? What is the budget for the Air Quality Fund? And finally, will LEZs have vehicle recognition software, such as in London, to detect buses and HGVs which breach the Euro 6 emission standards? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the last point that the member makes is, of course, uh, an important one when it comes to a consideration of funding, because uh, the important thing about LEZs is that when they're brought into being, that they are uh, uh, workable, manageable, and that we plan in advance for them uh, uh, being able to achieve. And until we know what the LEZ, where those LEZs are to take place um, uh, and what precisely the local authority in, uh, uh, in, in respect of that particular LEZ is looking to do in the short, medium and longer term. It's very difficult to put precise answers uh, on the issue of funding. Um, an LEZ uh, uh, in one city um, might look very different to another and we have talked about a rollout beyond 2020, beyond the four major cities. Um, so we would be expecting a variety of different plans uh, to be brought forward. The, the, the discussions about the first one are uh, uh, active and ongoing. We're in active uh, conversation uh, with both Edinburgh and Glasgow, um, Dundee and Aberdeen, and th those uh, you know, would be uh, the four cities that we would be looking at uh, by 2020. Beyond that, 
it will be a matter for a decision to be made about the air quality management areas and whether or not uh, low, uh, low emission zones should be uh, rolled out there. So it will you know, continue to be uh, an issue where we will have to have consideration as to what precisely in each location is being asked for before we will know the precise figures that will go, uh, go with that. Graham Dee to be followed by Donald Cameron. Uh, thank Dee. you. I, I wonder what role the East Scottish Government sees for green infrastructure in tackling poor air quality. Urban greenery can not only help reduce the amount of atmospheric pollutants that people are exposed to, but also contribute to biodiversity. I, I recognise placing an increased emphasis on this would require a shift in planning policy to the extent that shoulds become must, but I wonder if the government uh, sees a place for this in supplementing the measures noted in the Cabinet Secretary's statement. Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, I think everybody would probably agree that uh, um, uh, improving air quality in towns and cities offers many important advantages, and public health is our first priority in this area, but um, it, the measures can also make our towns and cities more attractive places to live, and to be uh, honest, uh, when uh, I was last in this job, um, we began progress on the Central Scotland Green Network, and it was a very explicit part of the work around the Central Scotland Green Network, um, that it would be, amongst other things, providing attractive places for businesses and employers to come because they are looking for a range of amenity uh, when they're looking uh, to invest. So I think it's incred incredibly important that we also remind ourselves that there are other benefits to be had um, from, uh, uh, from increasing uh, air quality in Scotland, reducing the level of pollutants, ensuring urban cities are greener and more pleasant places to live, uh, you know, reducing the risk of flooding, for example, is part and uh, parcel of all of that. These are planning issues. These are all perfectly valid things that uh, uh, planners can take on board. Uh, and I would commend members, if they're not aware of the Central Scotland Green Network, to make themselves aware of it, because that's a, a very big example of how important green infrastructure can be uh, in tackling not just air quality, but a whole range of things. Donald Cameron to be followed by Emma Harper. Donald Cameron. Thank you. Um, research from the British Lung Foundation noted that children growing up in areas of severe air pollution have been shown to be five times more likely to have poor lung development. Will the Cabinet Secretary commit to working in collaboration with the Cabinet Secretary for Health and Sport on this area? And what specific action will she take to ensure that the impact of air pollution on the health of Scotland's children is reduced? Cabinet Secretary. Well, indeed, and I've said that air, um, health is one of the key drivers for the uh, um, uh, uh, things that we, uh, um, when we're looking at air quality, although there are other, there are other benefits. I'm, I'm grateful for uh, the British Heart Foundation's uh, endorsement of what we were doing. Um, I think there is a recognition that we are trying very hard to uh, ensure that uh, 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 what we produce will be to the best uh, uh, health benefit of all our population, regardless of what age. Uh, the member is right to talk about young people. It's not just young people, of course, it's the very elderly uh, that can be uh, badly hit by poor air quality and those who've got pre-existing conditions. Those are the three groups which are most uh, vulnerable. And it's those groups that I think uh, that we would be expecting the local authorities when they're considering LEZs to be looking at uh, when they're thinking about taking them forward, because that's obviously got to be a key part of it. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the reference to children, of course, can take me on to a discussion about air quality monitoring uh, around schools, and I'm not sure whether that's where the member wished to go uh, in, in respect of this. Um, but uh, uh, the current monitoring programme, we do believe, is sufficiently robust to pick up any particular occasion, uh, issues in, in uh, locations around schools. And we would expect the schools issue to be part of any consideration that a local authority might make in respect of an LEZ. Emma Harper to be followed by Neil Bibby. Emma Harper. Thank you, President Officer. My question is a bit similar actually to uh, Donald Cameron's, but could the Cabinet Secretary expand on whether concerns such as the emissions of particulates and nitrogen dioxide, which do cause irritation of the respiratory system and exacerbation of existing conditions in vulnerable individuals, so as well as kids, but was, was that part of the reasoning behind the plans to establish more low emission zones in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, 
can I thank the member for the question? I think it's perfectly legitimate for people to want to emphasise the public health aspects of this. And I think I missed out in my last uh, response that, yes, indeed, I am working uh, with the health portfolio on this. It has been flagged up to them uh, as, a, as a very serious issue. Um, I've had uh, uh, conversations with uh, consultants in this particular area and commended them to my colleagues in health as well to ensure that they are well aware of some of the same things that we are uh, conscious of. Uh, the, member is, uh, uh, the member who's just asked a question in respect of uh, particularly those who are suffering from uh, cardiovascular problems uh, already. Um, I, I ought to say that w one of the slight difficulties we have is that although there is information about health, the the Committee on the Medical Effects of Air Pollutants, which is the one that came up with that original estimation of three to four months life shortening in Scotland, has warned that they're concerned that the statistics have some uncertainties about them and, and they're concerned that they shouldn't be used as the basis for public policy interventions. But of course, it's very difficult to ignore the information that we have from them. Um, so uh, I, I think we can conclude that any measures that improved air quality at a population level would have a positive impact on public health. I think it feels instinctively the right place to be. Um, what we're not able to do is break down to a regional or local level and capture the impacts of individual measures such as LEZs in respect of public health. That is not something which is uh, available to us yet. Neil Bibbid, followed by Mark Ruskell. I'm Bibbid. pleased that the Cabinet Secretary recognises that if we want to improve air quality, then we need to see modal shift towards buses. Uh, but the Cabinet Secretary will be aware since the SNP came to power in 2007 that the number of bus passenger journeys has fallen by 78 million and that almost 70 million vehicle kilometres have been stripped out of the bus network. We're not going to get people to go on buses if there's no buses to get on. And we're also not going to get people to go on buses if fares continue to rise. So does the Cabinet Secretary accept that the government should not take decisions that could lead to increased bus fares? And does she also accept that we need to see bus regulation now to provide a public transport system that the public actually needs? Well, uh, as one of the um, members in this chamber that does actually use, use buses, I am uh, uh, understandably of the view that uh, I would want always to have the widest possible availability uh, of both bus routes um, and indeed, as along with everybody else, uh, not to be charged too much. But of course, we're currently uh, in a situation where a lot of the decisions that are being made are being made by bus companies uh, um, and uh, it is a very active uh, um, local conversation going on in many, many places. Um, I'm sure the member has raised the very particular issues with buses uh, with the Transport Minister. Uh, I know that uh, uh, we are concerned uh, not to have LEZs, for example, feed through to what might be seen as a negative impact in terms of buses. And we have, of course, uh, uh, committed quite a lot of funding uh, to the various bus companies uh, in order to ensure that they can make the shift they need to do in terms of moving to uh, more efficient uh, uh, um, vehicles uh, and not to have a situation uh, where uh, the costs are being fed through. Uh, but I think, you know, there are a lot of, there's a lot of progress being made and uh, while that may not answer the, uh, the, the bigger, more ideological question that the member has asked, uh, I'm sure he would expect us to be aware of the potential dangers in all of this and to have them at the forefront of the discussions when we're having those discussions at local authority level. Mark Roskell to be followed by Lee MacArthur. Mark Roskell. Thank you. Um, can I welcome the statement today on behalf of the Greens? But given that, as the statement has just acknowledged, it can take up to four years to roll out an LEZ, does it perhaps suggest that the statement is three years too late? But if I can ask the Cabinet Secretary specifically about funding for the LEZ work, the UK government announced in the summer that there would be an additional £200 million to be spent on tackling nitrous oxide at the roadside. The Scottish government's only putting £2 million into council work on air quality. So can the Cabinet Secretary confirm today that every single last penny of the Barnet consequentials, Barnet consequentials that will come from that £200 million will be spent on tackling nitrous oxide in Scotland and as a result save lives? 
Cabinet Secretary. I, I think the government does have a good record. I mean, I I'm, I'm, you know, appreciate that Mark Ruskell may have wished this to have all happened maybe not just three years ago, but 10 years ago, 15 years ago. The fact is we are doing it now. The fact is we do have better air quality uh, than the rest of the United Kingdom, that we are actually uh, uh, making big uh, achievements. Uh, uh, that there has been considerable funding uh, gone into uh, issues and areas that will uh, affect air quality, and that will continue to be the case. I think in, I indicated that there, uh, uh, there will now be budget discussions in respect of uh, low emission zones. I'm not going to uh, comment on Barnet consequentials. That would be a, a matter more relevantly put to my colleague, uh, the Finance Secretary, uh, as I'm sure Mark Ruskell knows. Um, and uh, what we're doing at the moment is considering uh, LEZ funding within the forthcoming spending review. Uh, we recognise it's an additional cost pressure, but it's one that we will uh, uh, be absolutely uh, up to considering. Um, obviously, it will be influenced by LEZ sizes. Um, and uh, as regards the global amounts, I'm sure that Derek Mackay would be happy to engage with Mark Ruskell on that. Once again, more strategic issue of funding. Lee MacArthur to be followed by Angus MacDonald. Lee MacArthur. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Can I also thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of her statement and indeed much of the content within it, as well as reiterating my call not just for the expansion of the EV network, uh, but efforts to improve the reliability, not least through better and more timely uh, maintenance. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what assurances she can provide that progress on LEZs in Scotland's four largest cities will not undermine investment, support and focus on initiatives in other parts of the country, not just our uh, urban but also our rural areas? Uh, it, it is a separate uh, um, area of funding and a separate area of conversation. I'm uh, conscious that there were other uh, announcements and I referred to some of them in the statement in respect of electric vehicles which is something which will apply uh, right across Scotland um, and uh, uh, won't simply be confined to those parts of the country with LEZs uh, and obviously there is a, you know, a number of issues which, uh, uh, which there are uh, around the uh, move towards uh, 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 greater use of uh, electric cars and vans. Uh, I did see, and I'm looking for it here, um, that uh, Orkney got a special mention in terms, I think, of uh, electric buses. Uh, is that correct? Um, I'm glad the member is endorsing my recollection. So uh, that's a very good example of how this is an issue which really is one for the whole of the country. Uh, and electric vehicles are something which we will see in rural areas as well as urban areas, uh, despite people assuming that they're really a matter for cities rather than country. We're a little bit tighter for time than I originally envisaged, but if we're quick, we'll get a few more questions in. Uh, Angus MacDonald. Thank you, uh, President Officer. Um, following on from that last question, the Cabinet Secretary mentioned that there are localised emissions hotspots in some of our towns and cities, some of which are in Falkirk District, and we know that the majority of such emissions which contribute to ill health come from cars and light vans. Uh, notwithstanding her reply to Liam MacArthur, can the Cabinet Secretary set out how the government's encouraging the uptake of electric vehicles therefore reducing vehicle exhaust emissions, and does she agree this makes our cities more attractive places to live, work and visit, and that's ultimately good for business and good for our economy? Uh, well, in, indeed, the, uh, the answer to the final point is yes, and I'm sure that other members will have noted Friends of the Earth's uh, um, published list of Scottish air quality monitoring sites uh, uh, back in January 2017 with some uh, uh, kind of Dirty top 10, I suppose, would be the way we might describe it. Uh, but that's, uh, uh, it was actually eight in terms of nitrogen dioxide and uh, uh, six in terms of uh, uh, particulate matter, including some surprising ones uh, for those who assume that this is an urban or a, a big city problem. Uh, it's not. Some of the ones on the list, particularly for particulates, uh, were not big city, as I know, because one of them was in my constituency, uh, and that would probably come as a surprise to uh, many people. Um, Localised emission hotspots uh, come from a variety of vehicle sources, though, um, and it's not always the case that the majority of those emissions come from cars and light vans, which is often the first assumption. Uh, and that's why I make mention of some of the more surprising uh, admissions to the list. Um, there's no doubt that the uptake of electric vehicles and 
clean, modern petrol and diesel will make our cities more attractive places to live, work and visit. Uh, I've talked about the PFG uh, and the bold new ambition on ultra low emission vehicles, including electric cars and vans. Um, and we are going to be supporting this approach with the expansion of the Charge Place Scotland charging network and encouraging the public sector to lead the way on electric vehicles, because that's an important point to make. Uh, we can be leaders in this in the public sector. Um, and it, it, in a sense, it, it really is about, uh, we have to be in a place that says, do as we do, not do as we say. And Jamie Green. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary says that local authorities will ultimately be responsible for designing their own LEZs. This could potentially lead to uh, a situation where we have four very separate uh, rules and regulations. I think given that it's business who operate many of the vehicles that might be affected by the restrictions, these businesses operate in multiple zones. <clears throat> Does the Cabinet Secretary recognise the potential confusion that might arise from a multiple regulatory environment? And how is she going to uh, find that balance between the positive change in air quality that we all want without any substantial detrimental effect to our city's economies? The, I think the key to the, the concern that the member has, and you know, it is a legitimate concern when we're talking about different design in different parts of the country. The key to that, though, is the current consultation, which is uh, ongoing, and the, uh, the development of the national low, low emission framework. Um, which will be the framework within which we operate. So uh, the development will be supported by the work of the Cleaner Air for Scotland uh, uh, Governance Group. That's the first LEZ. Um, that will then uh, be designed in a manner consistent with the national discussion on the NLEF. And we're going to use the experience of putting in place the first LEZ to inform that national low emission uh, framework. So in a sense, we're already... Uh, looking forward to how we can ensure that there is a broad framework within which LEZs will be, uh, will be created, but still allowing local authorities to make the more individuated decisions that they require to make to deal with their own very local circumstances. Uh, thank you, uh, Member. Apologies to members who didn't get in there. Uh, we're going to have to move on to our next debate, which is about cities of culture. I will just take a few moments for the Cabinet Secretaries and others to change seats.